Hi everyone and welcome back to Sand Injunction for a little update in June. Uh, lots of bits and pieces in this one and a few warnings too. So join me now, let's crack on, let's see what's been going on. Okay everybody, welcome back. As I said just now, it's full of bits and pieces in this little update for June, uh, or coming to the end of June really. And it's, I haven't been doing too much the actual layout. I have been doing preparations to do more during the course of July. And of course, as we come out of lockdown a little bit more, hopefully, uh, some of the products that we've all been longing to get our hands on, in particular track and things like uh, cobalt uh, point motors all these things that we need to progress our uh, development of our layouts uh, have been in short supply and in most cases not able to be fulfilled at all so hopefully they won't be long now before they come into the shops and we can continue in the meantime I have been treating myself got to be said I had a birthday this month and my wife bought me some lovely little 21 ton mineral wagons and uh, one or two other bits and pieces for the layout so they will go in line in a train with a few more that are already weathered and they will be weathered themselves in due course i'll show you those later but i also wanted to talk about some of the other acquisitions i've made i've bought um a southeast um 416 in blue and grey, uh, that was straight from rails, uh, came about a week ago. I bought a blue and uh, yellow uh, or BR blue uh, class 33. Not quite sure how that's working at the moment. It wasn't brand new, I don't think, but uh, it, was a, it was a lovely job. Um, but I'm not sure if it should have lights. So I've got to look into that, but I can't make them work at the moment. I also bought myself a lovely new uh, Sir Martin Frobisher, I think it is. It's the um, uh, the Malachite Green um, Air Smooth uh, Battle of Britain class, and that joins my one I already have, which is Kenley. And I have a couple more. I've got a bit of a penchant for these Battle of Britain classes. So many of the the ones that I would love, like Fighter Pilot, and all of these others, are really early on in Hornby's history so they really can't be uh, put over to DCC easily uh, if at all and so I've sort of steered clear of those for the more recent editions of which there are a couple coming out hopefully this year too. So with that all said and done uh, what else have I been doing? Well over here and as I said I've been getting prepped up for it. Over here I have, will mention this later but I have been doing the start of some back scenes and uh, more about that in a little while. Uh, in addition to that, uh, because I can't do too much, I have been laying some of the track down here. Now I did time lapse that and, and this is the bit. <laughs> this will make you laugh because the time, la is, time lapse is all over the show. When you haven't done any track laying for a little while, um, I went straight back into it, thought, yeah, yeah, this is a doddle, let's get on with this. And I made so many stupid mistakes uh, that what should have taken me, uh, what was it, one, two, three, four pieces of track and one point should have taken about an hour at tops. Took me two and a half hours. Half of that time I was looking for the equipment that I forgot that I needed to complete the job. And when I did do it, I actually forgot some of the fundamentals involved. And I've now got to go back once that's dry and add dropper wires, which is something that I've done so much of uh, before I glue down. So it's just a little warning. <laughs> Get your head around the job before you start on it. Even if you know what you're doing, just think about it. Because if you haven't done it for a while, <laughs> well, it may just be me, I don't know. But if it is not just me then take it as a warning but i have laid this track here i will be doing more about the scenics over here once that's dry i want to start building up the tunnel and 
the polystyrene that I will be using in that area and start getting ready to put some greenery down. So longing to get some green on my layout, I can't tell you. Um, but hopefully before the end of July, there'll be a little bit of greenery on that part of the layout, at least that part there. And I will be starting to paint the uh, scenery uh, on the back as such as it's going to be. It's not going to be great. I know I paint pictures and, and all of that stuff, but there is so much backdrop to do. I'm not sure if I want to be able to do the whole 76 feet of potential backdrop that would be involved. But maybe I will over time. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, if I start liking what I'm doing here, I may continue the idea. But that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm also... Uh, in front of camera here and beyond and behind the camera where you saw me starting the um, track work for the branch line and I did all the um, all those uh, uh, sort of angles coming down as it goes down into high station then I'm going to start laying that track too. I'm going to start gluing it down can't put any point motors on there I've got them on back order with rails um, but uh, when they come that's great because I need quite a few of them but in the short term I will carry on putting this track down until I literally up the other side of Hyde there I can't do any more because until I can get my hands on some medium radius 75 code points I'm out of luck uh, so I can't do anything until I get some of those in um, but yeah other than that we'll crack on I'll show you a bit of time lapse I do a bit more on there um, you can switch through that lot if you don't want to watch that because uh, I've done loads of stuff on laying track in the past and of course you can you've probably done tons yourselves and don't really need to see some more so I put a bit in anyway and we'll do a bit more of that and before I ramble on put you all to sleep let's crack on take care catch you all soon lots been happening lots of little bits as I said before and this is the main area of what I'm doing right now this is this corner and the hill the tunnel etc 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 so what I want to do is got to put a single tunnel portal in here and a double one here I'm gonna probably step that one there and this one further back nice little bit of scenic between the two um, what I was doing about this the concrete blocks that I have in the garage are fine. I took a long time to paint them pale blue, but they've still got tons of holes in them. They really don't work. So I've gone for this picture frame as MDF, which I can get my hands on easily and cut to size, not a problem. And um, I did paint it with a blue, I thought it was an emulsion. It was an amalgam of a couple of paints that I poured in together. One of them happened to be a bathroom 
uh, one which was a little bit sort of glossy when I finished. So I'm going to go over the whole of that with skies and whatever I want to put in. Uh, I'm going to sketch it out to see roughly where I want distant hills and bits and pieces of information. And then I'm going to sort of not fix it at the moment. When I do fix it, I'm going to dob and dab it with no nails so it stays where it's put. So I've got to be sure that it's finished when I do it. And then I want to cut some polystyrene and start putting it in here and shaping it. Ideally, I push it up to here and then I can slide this in and out over the top so I can actually start forming the ground works here. And I need to come down through here and make the stream and all these other things I spoke about. So I'm going to time lapse some of that and hopefully not bore you to death with it. But uh, we'll just see how the progress grows. And um, it's, it's not going to be done for this update, but certainly we can make a start on it. Okay guys, and uh, you've seen all the time-lapse bits and pieces. I didn't want to give you too much of that. I didn't want to bore the pants off you. A lot of it was repetitive, and we've got where we've got to. Now, I'm in a situation where I've got a few dilemmas, and not quite sure, so I'm going to call upon your multitude of you, uh, and your expertise, as it were. And the biggest problem I've got, I put this in, and it, it's going to have to be glued down and it's going to have to be carved about. I mean, this is just uh, superficial in, in many respects. So once it's glued, I've got all the hot wire devices, freeform cutter, D cutter, to carve away at this and make this my own in that sense before I wrap it in... Um, um, sort of the normal wraps and and using some um mod not mod podge the other stuff uh on top of it and um so yeah i'm not doing much more to it right now because i need to put trains of all descriptions through here to make sure that there's no fouling and the allowance of clearance that i've put in on the inside so far is sufficient i also want to make sure that when i put some tunnel uh, a little bit going back there, just a little bit, not too much, but I want to put some tunnels going into there to make it look um, believable. So the dilemma I speak of is this one. I have got a situation where in the Elam area is quite hilly and um, there are, it's, I've been told by an expert that it was once millennia ago a an ex extinct caldera part of an old um, extinct volcano system uh, all the way around the area in the escarpment and you look at the topography and you can see how that would have been so there are much there is much water on top and there are no actual waterfalls or streams running down as such but they are natural aquifers 
that uh, come out at the base of the hill all the way around the Elam area, uh, especially where the gentleman lives uh, who told me uh, all about the history and what it was all about and the geology. And so there are lovely lakes and rivers all the way around. So my thought was that I was going to have water up here and then have some form of um, lakey thing here where obviously the aquifers are filling into and then the bridge under here. That's my thought. There's nothing wrong with that except can I make it, will it be believable putting water here and then suddenly water here? Carving this away, excuse me, start that bit again. Carving this away, I've got all the way down to this level, so I can really make a lot of statement about the carving of this. But at the same time, um, I need to make it believable. I had thought of putting a um, waterfall in, like the diorama uh, that I did once before, which I'll put some information up in the corner. Um, but I don't think there's no waterfall in Kent, to my knowledge. And I think that it will be just a little bit too much too far. So I really want to come back to the idea of water up here and getting water down here. If you've got any ideas on how that can happen, let me know. The other idea that I did have is just getting rid of the tunnel altogether and just having the hillside here coming down quite sharply into this area on that inner curve. Get rid of all this, get rid of this, get rid of the tunnels and have a bank here but I've still got the issue of how to make the water appear from there to there I think here I've got a little bit more uh, latitude with that so I'd be interested to know what you guys out there think and there is going to be tons and tons of different opinions but let me have some of them and maybe I can find one of them that really works for me here this area here which will go into the third tunnel. There's going to be three tunnels here, a single and a double here. Whether I use these uh, or make my own, I'm quite tempted actually to scratch build and make my own individual tunnel portals. Um, lots of people out there doing it. Um, John from Piccadilly, of course, is very, very good at doing it. And, and of course, we all know Paul from Galgrom Hall also is very very good at doing that sort of thing so i'm going to take some lessons from both those guys and i'm going to maybe have an attempt to scratch build certainly this triple and then i can build off from there and build it in here uh this curved track here is going to come way over this way so there's a bit of ground here that i can play around with to get the bank coming off working with this here a little bit more of, uh, I can actually build a little bit out from here and give myself a bank coming down this way and coming into there. So lots of lots of opportunities uh, for some decent landscaping. But for the first time, I am a little bit closer to putting some green stuff on my layout. Not yet, maybe for another month or even possibly two months, but we're getting awfully close so I'm really looking forward to this we're giving a little bit of structure to an otherwise flat layout so I'm really excited so all I will say is happy modeling everybody thanks for watching the video and thanks for all the support all the new subscribers that have come on thank you so so much and if you are watching this and you like the sort of stuff that I'm putting out but if you're not a subscriber, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. I think the word subscribe is awfully uh, misleading because I think it, it should be another word. But uh, uh, I think subscribing suggests that you have to pay something and you don't, of course. It's a very, very free thing. But it does tell uh, the YouTube algorithms that people like the content that I'm putting out. They like the, the uh, channel. And so therefore they help promote the channel. So your subscription to my channel really, really does help me in the future. With that all said, don't forget to add all your comments about this and any ideas you might have. I'll listen and also I'll be in a situation that maybe I can act upon them before I go and make my own decision of what's going to happen. So yeah, enough said. 
I'll catch you all in the next video. Uh, don't know when it'll be, don't know what it'll be on, but uh, there's a few ideas in the pipeline and I'm still doing the Sandlin Junction run down past me here uh, towards the Hyde station uh, whereupon I will run out of track but that's another story uh, so yeah anyway I'm I'm rabbiting on and um, yeah okay guys thank you thanks for watching thanks for all the support you show me and my channel appreciate that I'll even wear a better t-shirt next time. It's just I've been really grubby. So please forgive me for my sense of dress code. Um, but yeah, catch you all soon. Enjoy the new stop that I've got and a few running trains and catch you all soon. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. And I just wanted to show you one of the acquisitions that I've recently picked up. And I've got several coming in, actually. I have had a little bit of a spend up. It's got to be said um but uh there we are that's the way it is but this helgen class 33 d6508 br blue i wanted to start collecting some br blues i actually have an old uh class 40 behind which i bought a couple of years ago to um uh augment uh well not actually augment anything but to pull around a cmx track cleaner and found very quickly that that poor thing, although I thought it would, had no grunt in it. So uh, I had to resort. In fact, I've got a couple of rebuilt uh, West Countries and a Battle of Britain class, uh, the Bulliard Battle of Britain class, that will perfectly pull that around quite happily. So I use that should I need to. But also I wanted to draw your attention to these. These uh, frameworks here that uh, a good friend of mine James Wareham has uh, 3d printed he sent me three of them yesterday and my goodness they are cracking they are so good and I can't wait to get those painted up and uh, onto the setup as and when I get to that part of it so they will remain very very safe until that time and then i'll get them back out weather them down and yeah hopefully they'll be the part so james thank you so much my friend they are stunning and uh, i shall put a link to james's website up into the corner not his website to his channel uh, he has got an amazing loft layout and i'm i'm not jealous of it but i am in awe of it it's a fantastic piece of um modeling so Okay, so this is the class 20, uh, Batman class 20 that I picked up. And it actually uh, came to me as a, had a bent um, buffer. And um, it would, it merely, all it was, was it had, it had sort of come adrift really and been put in at an awkward angle. So once I'd taken it out and reset it, it was fine. So all's good that ends well. And this is a lovely little green model. It's an earlier Backman model, I think. I'm not quite sure, but it is now chipped, uh, or it ca actually came chipped. Okay, everybody, and welcome back. And you can hear rumbling around uh, going through the tunnels now. Some of the uh, new acquisitions that have come to Sandin Junction. Now, I was very, very strict before about what I was going to run on sanding lines. Um, it was always only ever going to be southern and it was only going to be from 23 to 48 and that's gone so far out the window it's unbelievable. Uh, and I suppose like everyone tells me rule one applies I will run whatever the heck I like on my railway and uh, so I run literally whatever I want. I've gone from about 1800 and something all the way through to 2019 with the recent addition of the 395 Javelin. Uh, but here we have going through now is a blue and yellow uh, Class 33, which I picked up recently off of eBay. Lovely acquisition. And I've also got coming through in a minute, <laughs> it's a bit slower, um, is a new uh, 416 in Southeastern livery, blue and grey. And I got that recently from Rails, and it was on a lovely offer for only £119. So there she goes, she's just coming out the tunnel now, and looks a peach. Uh, a little bit of a pain to get the chip in, uh, but then I had 
vast experience from doing a green version not that many weeks ago which you saw the disaster of that. So I'm going to let these trains run around and there is also a class 47 to add into that and also a, a Battle of Britain class Sir Martin Frobisher which I recently bought too. So that completes the lineup and also running around behind that class 25, uh, sorry that class 33 Blue and Yellow uh, is a, if they don't, if they stay on the tracks long enough, <laughs> oh, I'm not sure, there's no, they've lost them all. <laughs> you can't make this up can you? Oh dear, I did have a lovely rake for my birthday of Hornby's 21 ton uh, mineral wagons. <laughs> I would have shown you them but most of them are over there now <laughs> so I'm going to go and stop this train before it heads long into the others so I'll catch you all soon we'll have a bit of running and yeah all the best. Thanks for watching guys catch you all soon bye bye. There's a big pile up over there i got to tell i got to show you this lot. One massive great pile up. I could not get to the controller in time to stop it. Um, so there, there, and on the back there are a little birthday present from my wife that you should have seen in all its glory, but um, you've seen it in a vastly different state. I might put this in the video, I might be too ashamed. Anyway, I'll catch you all soon. Bye-bye.